and I'm so glad that everyone's here tonight for our April meeting and call, which are combined. We usually offer this option so that parents and other attendees have maximum flexibility to be able to attend and to participate and share your opinions, and your thoughts, and your concerns. I'm so glad that all of you are joining the call. I see some, you know, new faces, some familiar faces. So thank you so much. It's exciting to see all of you. We have new faces in the room too, which is also absolutely great over here at World Events. We're gonna we have a smaller group tonight than last time, but still a mighty, mighty group. So we're going to just do a quick round table and pass around the mic in the room first so that everyone can introduce themselves. And then we will do the same for everyone on the call. So I'm Jennifer Cardillo, like I said. I am the parent of a 17-year-old, almost 18, my goodness, attending Tollgate High School. She's a junior. Um, she is an absolute ball of fire. She actually had Leah this week. So very nice at the uh, combined program and Tollgate basketball game, which we'll touch on later today. Uh, um, it, it's been a wild ride being part of the special education advisory committee. Like a lot of parents, I ended up joining because I had a problem. And my husband did too, and we needed some advice and some counsel. And along the way, the years have passed, and I've made some really good friends and gotten a lot of help too. So I cannot echo how wonderful it's been to be part of the committee, and I hope that I continue to serve you all well as chair. I'm going to go this way to start. Hi, I'm Megan McQueen, a special educator at Libet School. Nicole Peacock, TA at Caitlin Regan, special educator at Warbeck and secretary of the committee. Good evening, I'm Dave Allenbach, the one that director of special ed for board. Leah Hazelwood, vice chair of the Water School Committee, representing District 2. Edwina Neufeld, uh, look at Aaron. Three from also. Jen Garber, co director of special ed. All right, we are going to switch over to the phone and we're going to start with Paula Regan. Uh, next to Alyssa. And if you're unable to come off mute, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. So, hi, Alyssa, you can introduce yourself. Hi, Alyssa Breyer. Try, uh, my son goes to Welk. He's four and a half. Alyssa? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. sorry. Lamoth. <laughs> I'm going around in the circle. <laughs> Hi, my name is Melissa Lamoth. I'm a speech language pathologist at Park Elementary School in Warwick. I am also the parent of two children in the district, one Tollgate senior and one sixth grader at Winman. Frank. Hi, everybody. My name is Frank Galligan, and I'm the principal at Warwick Neck Elementary School. Ashley. Hi there, Ashley Russell. I'm a special educator at Norwood Elementary School in the co-taught program in grade three. Excellent. Mary. Oh, she got a slash grandparent for Mary. Um, Cynthia. If you're able to come off mute, if you're not, just you can introduce yourself in chat. Uh, Michael, you're next. Uh, hi, Michael Latiri, fourth grade general educator in a co taught classroom at Park Elementary. Welcome. Hope. Um, hi, I'm Hope. I'm a special ed teacher at Welk in a co uh, well, co taught integrated classroom. And I'm having trouble seeing. The next name, Caitlin. 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 Hi, I'm Caitlin Emerson. I am an IASC teacher at Park. Hi, welcome, Caitlin. Uh, Patricia. Hi, yes, my name is Patricia O'Leary, and I'm a first grade teacher at Park, regular ed. All right, welcome. And I think I got everyone. If you weren't able to come off mute, then just introduce yourself in chat or welcome. We're happy you're here, even if you can't take her off mute. And if you have any questions and you can't take yourself off mute if you're on the phone, then please make sure that those are entered in the chat. We will be monitoring that throughout the call. So I'm going to review our group norms very briefly. Um, these are pretty easy. 
And we had a great following for this, and we've never had a problem. And I don't expect one tonight either, but it's always good fun to um, know what they are. Um, we'd love to have full participation. We have really rich conversations during these uh, meetings, and we would. And it's so nice to see more of you attending, which means that that tradition will continue tonight. Uh, we love it when you share your unique perspectives. Every one of us has come to this meeting from a different place. Whether you're a teacher or you're a parent, if you're a TA, you've walked different paths. Some of us are, you know, grandparents, as we've been very noted on the call. And all of us are going to have different point of views. We've all dealt with special education in a different way. Some of us have attended the IP meetings as parents, so we have a different point of view too. And we all potentially have children who have different abilities that we've all dealt with and we've had different learnings from that. So as you hear feedback from those who are attending the meeting tonight, just keep that in mind. All of us have worn a different pair of shoes on our path to get here and it doesn't mean that we all can't understand each other and share those common interests and find some common ground. You know, just as we have those common grounds, there's also going to be a variety of opinions. Some of them we will agree with, some of them we won't, and that's completely okay. Just so we do that in a respectful manner, we can continue the conversation. Finally, the last reminder that I always give is that we're not a parent support group. That doesn't mean that you can't find support here. I certainly have over the years. This is how I've gotten to know other parents. Um, if you do need support and are not getting your needs met, it's a great time to reach out to your special services team, to talk to other parents who you see on the call, maybe to get some advice on how to approach the teams if you need that. But just remember, we won't be giving that type of support during the call. And we're also very, very careful with our mess mentioning any of the experiences with our kids. There's a lot of health issues that are involved. Those are private and confidential, and we want to make sure as we go through the meeting. Are there any questions about the group forms at all? You in the room talk about the Okay, cool. Excellent. Then I'm going to turn the floor over to Caitlin. Caitlin, I'm passing the mic down for our meetings. Okay, I'm going to drop a link for the minutes from last month into the chat. If anyone would like to open them, I'm also going to present them on the screen. They are quite long, so feel free to read through. I tried to get everything, I think, um, but if I made any errors, feel free to correct me and I can correct it right on here.
anyone has any questions or corrections, we'll to accept. Okay. All in favor? Aye. The meetings have been accepted for last month. We're going to turn the floor over for the Director of Special Services Report, uh, Jen David, who would like to start. Um, so one of the most exciting things that's happened uh, this week is we have five new LEA positions, which will be uh, put in the five cool talk schools, the elementary schools. Uh, these are special educators who come with a very special set of, of skills. Uh, that will be sitting in to facilitate special ed meetings uh, instead of the principals. So this will free up our principals to be instructional leaders and focus on MTSS, which is a uh, layer of support uh, for all students um, in need. And it will also free up our school psychologists who are currently the initial case managers, um, which requires tons of paperwork and just taking away from, from direct contact with students. So. These five special educators, they will not have a caseload. They will focus on compliance, working with families, working with special educators um, to prepare for meetings and um, professional development and work with the principals to understand the process. A lot of our principals don't have special ed backgrounds, so it can be difficult. So we now have this extra layer of support for our special ed teachers to go to um, and prepare. So, um, so we, we actually do have five candidates. We're still waiting for two to formally respond to human resources. Uh, so once they do it, you know, we'll go out to the community for that. Um, we, in today, we will be starting to have principal and teacher forums at each of the five co-taught schools. Um, we did start, uh, I met with the intensive academic and supportive academic cohorts uh, on Monday. And we had some really productive brainstorming uh, planning. So once those LEAs are in place, we're going to bring everyone together, come up with some planning to then bring to the principals to start um, planning with the principals. So lots, lots has definitely happened in the last two weeks, which is great. So, do you have anything else to add? Thank you. We do have a spot within the agenda today for public comments and questions recovering the elementary special education changes. So that will be coming up in a few minutes. But if you, I wanted to check in with everyone on the phone as well as everyone in the room to see if you have any questions about the director of special services report. If you change your mind and you're on the phone, you can please chat while and you're like, oh gosh, I should have asked something. That's so totally okay. We'll keep monitoring it. And in the meantime, we're ready to turn the right phone over to Leo for the um, school committee report. Good evening, everyone. Um, last night, we passed the superintendent's budget, or proposed budget. This is the first time that a school committee that I know of, and I've been watching school committee meetings for and attending them for over 10 years. This is the first time we took the budget and did not cut it at all. And had it's going to be presented to the city council. It will have an ask of 4.5 million, which with the cost of inflation and the cost of everything going up, it is appropriate. It's for the education of our children and I'll stand behind that budget. Um, it will mean that the budget will be about $190 million for next year. And if everybody could go to those budget meetings when we present it to the city council, that would be very important Believe me, your presence makes a difference. When you are there advocating for your child's education, it makes a difference. So please make an effort to be present. Um, furthermore, it's, oh, and that date is May 20th, by the way. Uh, it'll also be presented to the mayor ahead of time, but 
that's how we should be presenting it to the city council. If anything changes, I'll make sure to uh, bring it to next month's meeting and also I'll post it on Facebook. Some points to remember is though we are making some reduction in our employee list, most of those are retirements. And if the numbers show that we need to hire teachers, we will. Uh, special education is a priority to this committee. Our children with, that have special needs are a major priority to me personally as a parent of a child with special needs and also having worked with special needs children for over 30 years personally and professionally. I, it's a big deal and what the children need is always gonna be a top priority. Thank you, Jen and Dave, for everything you've done to add to our workforce in special ed. Um, so going further, I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions? In Hi, Alyssa, go ahead. Yes, where is the budget meetings held? At City Hall, in City Hall Chambers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you repeat the date for the city council meeting? Um, I have May 20th. Okay. If there's anything different, I will make sure that I inform everyone. But what time is that? Usually they start at six, but it could change. Just, there's just one more thing that I wanted to, um, to say. Um, for any parents out there who have uh, preschoolers right now who will be in kindergarten next year, who will be attending Warwick Public Schools, uh, I just need to make sure that you re-register. I know that you've been registered, but there's a process to, um, to register for kindergarten. And we have a lot of, of kiddos who still need to be registered. So if you do have one and you haven't done that yet, um, please do so, so we can get our list together. Our teachers are eager to reach out to families and, and be able to start making those connections. Okay, Melissa? I was just wondering, when usually is the decisions made from special services of where your child's going to go to kindergarten? So when do you get notified of that? If, as soon as we have the majority of students um, registered, we can look at those lists and make sure that we, you know, we keep class sizes the way that they need to be in the program small enough. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One piece that I didn't hear mentioned by either you or Leo was ESY. Um, can you go over what the plans are for this year and what that program is potentially going to look like? We're still in the planning phases. Uh, our ESY packets have not all come in, so we don't even know the, the sheer number of, of students that we'll have that do on Friday. Um, so once we have that, and we, we have to look at IEP needs. So once we have that, we review the packets, and then we start to develop the program that will be based on IEP needs. So we'll have Friday, definitely have more to come. This Friday. Okay. We know the dates, the yes. dates of ESY. Yeah, they just, for those on the phone, they asked what the dates were for ESY. ESY 10th. Should have to the building. I'll find it. I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. I was like, oh, it's April. It's not what I should ask. <laughs> like, I think my debit card is July 8th to August 2nd. July 8th to August 2nd, for those who didn't hear the phone. Um, I think there were two hands raised. Um, Alyssa, I saw your hand raised again, and I know there was one more. Quick question. If my son is on the way out from Welk going to kindergarten, will he still be eligible for ESY at Welk? Or is it just like he's lost in the shuffle because we're going to kindergarten next year? 
you know, that's a team decision. So when you have your annual IEP, that's, okay. that's one of the areas that they look at. So if you still haven't had your annual IEP um, meeting, no, I haven't had it yet. Um, it's coming in um, June. Okay. Yep. So um, actually, actually, you reach out to your parents, you know, reach out to your teacher the, you know, the next couple of days. Great. Thank you so much. Are there any additional hands raised on the phone? I thought I saw one more, but I might have been mistaken. Um, I'll just piggyback on Alyssa's question. Um, I actually would encourage you if you have any questions about whether your child's going to be eligible as a starting point to reach out to your special education teacher, or your case manager. Um, for the, I went through the same thing you went through, Alyssa, with when my daughter went from well to kindergarten and beyond. Um, and normally, in my particular case, the teachers would about coordinating with me for uh, and uh, my daughter for those changes and whether she was going to be eligible or not. So it is on a case by case basis and based on me, but definitely they're the place to start. Any other questions, comments, feedback on either the phone or within the room on any of the topics mentioned so far? All right, then I am going to open the floor for public comments and questions covering the elementary special education changes. Um, Jen, which one of you would like to start just to, yeah, I want to make sure the floor is open. I speak to Allie is that where I ask you questions? Yes, right. Yes. So last month, you said you were to start so mid-March, so we just started, we had our first meeting with some of our special education teachers. We started talking about, um, you know, what they feel those areas are because they're with their gen ed teachers. Um, we're going to have some principal and teacher forums at each of the schools. Um, I think probably mid-March, we wanted to get the OEAs in place because we want them, whoever's assigned to that school to be a part of the process right from the beginning. Um, so mid-March, we should start having those, and um, by the um, not March, May, we should be able to um, have some power forms. We want to be able to have enough information and really be able to answer people's questions. So April vacation, you know, that kind of slowed things down a little bit, too. So um, we're hoping by, you know, the end of May that we'll have a solid update for you that we'll have been able to get that out. Other additional questions does everyone have on the phone or um, within the room for the elementary special education changes? We are going to have a public comment and questions period at the end of the meeting. So if anything occurs to you that you should have asked, that's absolutely there's a you, you haven't lost the time at all, and there'll, there'll be another moment for us to bring this up. I'm going to switch over to new business. Um, oh, wait. Oh, you have one more? Yeah, I just have yeah. yeah. concern yeah. about yeah. the, the oh, social no, 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 stuff. So, um, I know that our other city last month was the new model is interviewing general classes and social education are being treated. Um, but there's so many points of age we can't find out. So, not a problem. So, right now, if your child is in a co talk class, they are in a general education setting yeah. with the special ed teacher, and they're all dead. Um, but with what we're doing with freeing the principal up with the OEA positions and then freeing psychologists up getting that MTSS, so we're hoping to have layers of support throughout the building that will be preventative. And because people are not stuck to one place, there will be lots of opportunities, lots of layers of support within the building um, for that. I mean, it's, it's going to happen, you know, here and there. Um, but we're hoping to really take a proactive approach and, and 
remove the barriers that, that we have right now with getting students because there could be a student be two students losing it in a room if you're one teacher so we really need to free up our, our you know support professionals to be able to to provide that throughout the day yes just have to ask us with the project aware we have a coordinator who is really supposed to be working with teachers in buildings to help them with the social and emotional component. Do we know if that's began yet in, in school trainings to help the teachers? Because this is really something that we should begin soon. It is not. So yeah, so Chris Murray is our SEL coordinator for the district. Yep. Um, she has signed up our project where there is a uh, uh, psychologist any other questions we make sure the both ways this time <laughs> <laughs> anything else on the phone like I just said, there's we're going to have another period for comments and questions. So let Ashley beat me before we switch. So Ashley, up you're up. Hey guys. So I think my question is just that we um after we had our forum in March for the special ed um changes, there were a couple of parents who were asking questions. And so we've been kind of um just letting them know that, you know, we'll we'll communicate with them whenever we find the information. Um, I think my question is like going forward, if we are in a meeting with a family um, for their annual IEP, do we mention um, that there is going to be changes coming for next year and that we'll keep the parents updated just in transparency? Or I was just kind of looking to see what the recommendation was because we have had some parents reaching out and asking questions about what next year will look like. Um, I mean, there's no problem with being transparent. Their IEPs won't change the, the amount of service time they'll get is the same. Um, but you know, obviously there's so many details to iron out. We want to be able to have enough information to share with families. Um, so we do anticipate that in the next few weeks. Um, but absolutely, and feel free to give our numbers to them and, and we can definitely have those conversations too. Thanks so much, Jen. And you're welcome. I'm gonna to try to talk slower this time. <laughs> Anyone else on the phone or within the room who thought of something or, you know, the questions the staff popped another thought anything all right we're going to sneak into new business now um if anything does come up don't worry we still have tons of time here and you need to make sure that the questions are answered last month we had an amazing the discussion amazing recognition of Warwick teachers staff student groups there were 12 of those recognized and those recognitions were also included in the April Warwick School Committee meeting. We want to continue that fine tradition because quite frankly those who have been recognized deserve those call outs both in this meeting as well as in the upcoming school committee meeting for May. So I'm hoping that quite a few of you are in the room as well as on the phone can see. I don't need you don't need to be tall or anything, but it would be nice to move in here at you tonight. I just get one from a submission from our full Google form. Okay, excellent. I'm going to send over the mic to Caitlin to start us on. So Lindsay Gugliano was recognized by Christine Camacho, who wrote uh, she has been such an amazing support for my daughter this year in school. My daughter travels with Mrs. G all day for education support. She has never been more confident and happy to go to school. Having a supportive teacher gives you wings to fly. Oh, that was lovely. All right, any other recognition? Looking for raised hands on the phone? Well, this stuff. I wanted to just recognize all the teachers that participated in the STEAM night at Welk. I think it went really well. It was the week of the young child and they did the STEAM night and parents could go in with the book fair going on. I wanted to just shout out all the teachers who had a booth there. They did an amazing job. 
Thank you so much, Alyssa. That was fantastic. Thank you for sharing the recognition. Um, who else do we have either on the phone or in the room? I can do the third. No, oh, Leah can do the third. Might be the same one. I don't know. I want to exactly a lot. I feel like they want to give a shout out to uh, Nicole Merchant. She does an amazing job with the children that she serves. She loves the kids. She, I think she's been out one day all year because no matter what, she wants to be present, uh, do her best for the kids. And I just want to give her, give her a shout out because she deserves it. I just wanted to do a quick shout out to Sue Meyerson, who is one of our OTs, who's been here forever. Um, she's always a positive force. Uh, we had a really tough thing at one of our schools, and she took the time at 1 a.m. to write an email that was beautiful, recognizing the teachers who stepped up and the team that really worked hard. I think there were 16 people there at the team, and um, she just took the time. You know, she does that often, just to recognize people. So. Just for her positivity. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, Alyssa, you have your hand raised? Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on the Nicole Bertrand comment. She actually is um, also responsible for most of the parenting and partner nights at Welk, which those meetings have been very helpful to me. And I've attended most of them. So I just wanted to also say that she knows my son and she doesn't even have my son in her class. So she's with, she handles all the kids. She does the buses in the morning. She really is everywhere, Nicole. Oh, that's wonderful. So uh, the, these things that, you know, I can leave our meetings and everyone shares recognitions like this, they warm my heart. I'm um, just like, it's just like a ray of sh sunshine for the day. And I'm so glad to hear them. So we have any more either on the phone or within the room. So Leah, you're gonna to have to help me with this next one because you were there and I couldn't be because I'm a parent. <laughs> so uh, as I mentioned, there was a volleyball game this week for Unified, or sorry, basketball game for Unified. Um, and I'm going to recognize two groups. One, obviously the teams um, from Pogrom and Tolgate, as well as the entire Pogrom community who was so welcoming and all the students were amazing. And I've heard nothing, nothing but good feedback. Now, since I was a parent of one of the players on the team, I wasn't allowed to attend, which is very sad. But my second shout out is for Leah, because you took tons of videos and pictures of that kind of thing. And I'm going to be very selfish. I saw my daughter's ponytail on one of them. So I was like, good touch, my daughter. And all the rest of the friends on Tollgate and some of my daughter's friends at Tollgate, I got to see too. It was fabulous. I was so happy that you did that so that I could be part of the day and could share those videos with her friends and with the whole the program at Atoll Gates. So that's your best, my greatest hope is that the parents will see you. Oh, sorry. And that's my greatest hope is that the parents will get to see their kids in action and the support that's there for the kids. It was a wonderful event. Yeah, and it was very obvious. If you get a chance to um, go on Leah's page, those videos have been posted, those pictures have been posted. It's really heartwarming to see the acceptance, the love for the kids who have stepped out of their shell and have gone on to the sports teams. I've seen it for Unified Volleyball, for basketball. We've mentioned this in our meetings here for the events that are now happening at the elementary school level. So I think this is just a really good thing for our community. So if there are no more recognitions, I'm going to switch us over to the Mental Health Awareness Month presentation. Um, that presentation is scheduled for next month. We have been speaking with Dr. Heather Pelletier. Um, she has confirmed that she will be presenting the exciting part of the date. So um, we proposed uh, six dates. It will not be on the 22nd. She has prior commitment on that date. I believe uh, throughout the day, including in this meeting, we are now down to one date. Uh, since the city council meeting is on the 20th, we need to take that date off the plate now. <laughs> <laughs> we are at May 13th. So um, I would propose for everyone here that 
that presentation will be held on May 13th. We will need to find the location so that will be confirmed and sent out to everyone and communicated. But I think if you could pen that in so that yeah, I'll pen it in so I can do and everything. Um, the topic that we've discussed is to look at the intersections of student elopement and student performance within the classroom and within the schools for those students that have anxiety and how that and how having anxiety for students impacts their performance at school and in life and what techniques and can be used both as part of IEPs as well as us learning those as parents to help those kids who are have that particular condition and it's impacting you know many things in their life and how those kids what we can do to help them build up their toolkit so that they can be successful. So we're going to refine that a bit more over the next month and I'll leave those conversations and run them by everyone. But for right now that is the preliminary overall topic. I don't know if there's any questions on the proposed topic where you're like, oh gosh, no, let's not do that. Uh, but if um, I could get a little bit of feedback during the meeting and make sure I'm going in the right direction with that presentation, this will help. I think it's too positive. What about you? I think it's a, it's a really good topic to, uh, to visit. We do have issues with elopement, even from people's homes. I know the Warren Police Department has been working with. Uh, professionals in the, in the area to learn more about that and what they can do if they have to find someone in the community. So that's a great topic for parents. It's a great topic for our schools. We want our schools to learn more about I support that. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, the anxiety is a perfect topic for us to talk about. It's a very broad topic that can encompass a lot of things. Um, and I think if we focus not only on, like, how it impacts students at school, but also at home uh, and, you know, how they can deal with that at home. Um, I don't know if we want to be specific about something like elopement that might not be as broad um, and just leave it with anxiety and how it impacts students at school and home. Oh, that makes sense. All right, and then if we, because that's in two weeks from now, so so we can. So we'll we'll get on that planning. Yeah, we'll get on that planning. I keep looking. I keep looking. What did I disagree to? Alyssa. Um, along with elopement, I know with ASD, it's very common for like masking and like after school burnout for kids. So that might be something to discuss in the next mental health meeting. A lot of kids are masking all day and then they're going home and melting down afterwards or melting down at school and then they're fine at home. So that might be something to look put into your presentation. I have a feeling if we allow her raising of hands right now, there will be every single hand raised this meeting. So I'm going to be looking at that particular one. Thank you for sharing. Are there any other, to, to that point, Lisa, are there any other questions that you think you'd love to have addressed as part of their presentation? Anybody in the room, anybody on the phone, things that haven't already been mentioned, you're like, oh gosh, if we can't tackle that as part of the piece, have that discussion. Dr. Peltier really wants this to be a discussion and not a presentation. So, yeah, so it would help if I had, you know, if there's any more guidance you have. Well, if anyone thinks of anything, you've got my email, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Right. Okay, then I'm going to turn the mic back over to you for the 2024-2025 meeting dates. If you want to talk about this, oh, okay. well, okay. this parish. Okay, apologies. So, uh, I just wanted to mention to you, I missed this piece, that the third annual mental health and wellness fair will be on 5-1 from 5 to 7 p.m. at Warwick Vets. So um, this event has been, you know, publicized, but I'm still not sure everyone knows about it. And it's really exciting that we're kicking off Mental Health Awareness Month in the world community with this. So if you could, we'd love to see you there. I'm planning to attend. 
Um, I'm bringing my kid with me and any other neighbors that I can convince to come along. So if there's anyone else who'd like to attend, you know, look out for me, come say hello. I'm Caitlin, now back over to you. Uh, I pulled up our agenda onto the screen so everyone can see it. Um, the proposed meeting dates for next year, um, keeping with our end of the month Wednesdays um, for August is August 21st, the week before school starts. Um, September, we in the past, we've tried to attest them with the open houses um, at the schools. October 23rd, um, November, we want to include um, a community presentation opportunity. Um, January 22nd, February 26th for a presentation possibility. Uh, March 26th, April 23rd for another presentation, and May 28th. Um, as, as we know, these can obviously change. They've changed this year. Um, we moved around some of our dates in the spring for presentations. Um, so if things come up and then we get closer to these dates and they don't work or we have to switch them, um, we can obviously do that. But The only date I know right off the bat that's a problem is August 21st. I would like to be here and I'm going to be in Texas that night. So I'm hoping that maybe we could look at another date. For and we can always push it to the next week, the 28th. That's, that is right before school starts. That was the night. What is the before. date for this the night before? I would get, I don't, you don't have to meet in August. Up to you. I would like to meet in August if we can figure, you know, find a date. Even if it's the week before that, I don't know if that still would be a problem for people's vacations, but if we could at least. Plan on something. School starts to go ahead. I, uh, yeah, I don't want it the day before school. So, so I think. I am pretty sure. I can't see everyone on the screen right now or in the room, but I'm pretty sure if I go no, <laughs> please no. Yeah, earlier. I can leave August as TBD for now. Yeah, let's do that. We'll find a time that is not the 21st. Uh, <laughs> not John, the day before school. Right. Do we want to keep with the 6 p.m. time? that work. I personally feel we've got, I'm seeing a lot of heads nod on the phone. I think we've gotten much better attendance this year because we switched to 6 p.m. rather than having it at 6.30 and it looks like there's a lot of agreement on the phone. So I, I would propose to keep it too. Um, and then the other, only other piece is um, location. We've tried to meet um, at the library sometimes in the past. Um, obviously we've met here. Um, wherever you think be the spot for us to, so I'd like try to focus on. You know, I'd like to explore just from a sound standpoint because I know we're still having some issues with sound here, and maybe either switch over to Gordon or go back to the library. But we'd have to have a microphone for the library, here, so you know, I it might be better for. Yeah, yeah, the smaller sure. room at the library has always worked for okay. us. Um, it's just we'll have to see how the numbers work out next year. Um, if we have higher attendance, then we can always look for a bigger room. All right, that's pretty good. So location will be confirmed. We're going to explore. But it sounds like at least preliminarily, these dates, with the exception of August, which if I remember last year, we also ended up with a big debate on the August date too. So more to follow on that one. And hopefully we'll see how this works and if we need to switch because as council meeting comes up, a school committee meeting comes up, then it will be possible and continue that way. On old business for membership. Um, I did bring some um, membership applications. If anybody, um, I believe our bylaws state you attend two meetings in a row and you'd like to become a member, um, you can get your membership form right here. Um, and <laughs> we'll announce you at the next school committee meeting. You can officially be a member. Um, but if anybody would like to be a member and you don't want to take the form tonight, um, feel free to email either one of us. Um, we'll put your name on list. Thanks. Hi, Alyssa. Could um, Caitlin maybe email me the membership application? I think I'll maybe we can just email the membership application out to everyone. Yeah. So, including everyone. Yeah. Here. So. Thank you. 
And I am a big believer in recognition, so filling out the form will be enough for me to want to be announced at the school committee meeting. So <laughs> that's just me. Um, I really hope that all of you who are not already members of, of our wonderful group will consider joining. We'd love to have you here. We'd love seeing your faces, and there's been a lot of really good comments and feedback. So hopefully that will continue. And I believe that covers the recognition program for the most part. However, I still would really like a name for the recognition program. And I'm terrible at marketing, which I think anybody who knows me is very well aware of that. So if you come up with any suggestions on what we call our membership program for next year, I'd like to start things off with something catchy that is not designed by me because otherwise it'll be called recognition program. And I don't think we need that. <laughs> so, so any suggestions, pass them along. And I'd be very grateful. Our next meeting date um, looks like it is going to be Monday, May 13th, which is in a couple of weeks. So it, we just love to make things a challenge looking for space. And that's what we're about to face, which is all good. But that means that more people will be able to attend, which is also better. Um, I want to move us over to public comments and questions. This is pretty much our open time. If you have any questions on anything that we've discussed during the meeting, or we forgot to mention something, you're like, hey, or, you know, is there something that's been on your mind that this is your time to ask? All right, then I'm going to propose to be adjourned tonight's meeting. Oh gosh, yes, I think we forgot to do that. Uh, if I mean, everyone, for you, those of you who have attended, if you could please take one minute, and I'll get, I'm not going to adjourn until everyone's done this on the, on the line uh, to put your email in chat so that we have that and that you can continue to receive the meeting updates, locations, which apparently will do a little bit of planning on that particular one. So let's not have that be a surprise and if one knows where to show up. But that email is very important. So we have 30 seconds to do that now. And otherwise we'll adjourn. All right, I see them coming in now. Hi, Adam, we just asked everyone to, we're at the end of our call, but we did ask everyone to put their email into the meeting chat just so that we have it going forward. By the way, hello. <laughs> All right, that ends our um, meeting for today. Everyone, thank you so much for those of you who were able to make it in person. Um, for those of you who are on the phone, I'm so happy to see your face. So, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks at our upcoming mental health presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone.